AI Rollers Degenerates today a real treat in the form of a back-to-back -back main event winner on the World Poker Tour. And he's the only player ever to accomplish that feat. Think about it. The WPT has been big business since late 2002. All those great players, all those champions, and our guest today is the only guy to go back-to-back. -back. Darren Elias, our guest today. Darren, welcome, man. Thanks for joining us. Hey, no problem. Happy to be here. Congratulations. It's kind of how it works in poker sometimes, right? You put in all the hard work, you pick up a score here or there, you come close to a big one a few times, and then all of a sudden, bam, two in a row. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of like momentum. When you're, when you're running hot, uh, the wins usually come in bunches. I remember talking to Tom Schneider, who's won four bracelets now at the WSOP. He was the player of the year in 2007, and he says it's like that. When you're running good, everything seems to work. They fold on your bluffs. They call when you got it. I mean, and then you got the confidence to boot, so you're not afraid to try things when you think they'll work. Yeah, yeah, it's a great thing when uh, everything's coming together and uh, the scores are coming, you're playing well, you're running well. Um, this everything adds up. Has it sunk in yet that you've made WPT history? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, starting to sink in that uh, I was the only one to do that. Um, I know Mar Marvin Rettmeyer, I think, had won two, but not in the same season. So uh, I guess mine is different because it was in the same season. Yeah, I mean, when you think about all those great players that came before you on the WPT, now you've got this little piece of history. Nobody can take it away. I mean, that's got to be special. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no matter how much money I win, I mean, I always have that. Um, no one will have done that. So, uh, it's yeah, it's an accomplishment that uh, no one can take from it. Now, Tony Dunst did a piece on you and Rod Deal. He mentioned how respected you are among the online and live pros, that your game is uh, is respected. You know, people fear you. Is that kind of recognition important to you? Yeah, yeah, my reputation is important. Um, it, it, means, uh, it means something to me that uh, my peers respect me, so... That is important, but uh, in the end, I mean, that, that's not going to pay the bills, so I have to win, too. Yeah, I was going to ask you, are you one of these guys where it's all about the money, or, or do, do these little things that add up on your resume count, too? Um, I guess I'm, I'm more about the money, but um, uh, I, I don't hate these things on my resume, either. I mean, I like those, too. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, you, you've you been to a couple of WPT final tables prior to your victory in September, and a WSOP final table, I believe. Did those experiences help you at the Borgata? I mean, your opponent, Kane Callas, he knocked every player out at that final table. You were two to one down in chips when it got heads up. Did you rely on some of those experiences that you had in the past to uh, pull you through there? Yeah, I, I think at Borgata, um, I was the only one who had made a WPT final table going into it. So uh, I could tell the other players were like a little tense or nervous, and uh, I had been there before. So I think the experience helped a little bit. But um, kudos to Kane. He played incredible, and uh, he's, he's a good, good player. So it, it was still a tough heads-up match in the end. So what's next for you then, Darren? A bracelet? I mean, do you set goals for yourself in poker? Um, yeah, I mean, I've always wanted to win the World Series bracelet. That, that's a goal of mine. Um, can't, can't win one of those till, uh, till June, so I'm going to keep traveling the WPT circuit. And uh, I'm actually at Borgata now. I'm going to play the Fall Open on Sunday. Now, if you aren't playing poker, or at least if you're if you're going to watch poker, who are some of the guys you like to watch or maybe even play against? I mean, would it be a Phil Hellmuth, or would it be some tough online guy that you really respect his game? Uh, I guess I'm more a uh, fan of the, the online generation, the younger players. I think, uh, especially the Germans nowadays, are some of the best players in the world, uh, like the Ole Shimnon or uh, Phil Hort, those kind of players. I want to talk to you about that because I heard a quote, I think it was from Jason Kuhn, who said, if you are the same player now that you were six months ago, you've actually uh, decreased in talent because the game has passed you by. Uh, away from the table, besides just playing tournaments all the time, are you working on your game away from the table? And if so, how do you do that? Yeah, I do a lot of uh, off-the-table work. Um, actually, I've done some coaching, and I think coaching other players has actually helped me with my game a little bit because um, it's kind of helped me... Uh, justify the plays I'm making like I, I know I'm doing these things and I'm not really sure why I'm doing them and um, when I'm coaching I'm explaining it and I think that helps me uh, kind of understand why I'm doing some of these things I also do a lot of hit history review of my own on uh, from online tournaments that I'll, that I'll run through on uh, hold a manager or that, that kind of software I was gonna say because the game seems to be constantly changing I mean the ordinary fan, a guy like me who, who likes to watch the game, will watch the WSOP November 9 final table and not really understand why they're just calling in spots instead of raising. Me, I'd be all in, you know what I mean? Uh, the game is changing. Strategies are always changing. Yeah, it's a constantly evolving game, and um, 
the good players, it's amazing what they do. They they uh, develop these strategies that win, and then um, six months later, or a year later, they have to develop new strategies that beat the old strategy they invented, which is kind of kind of ridiculous. When you think about it, do you respect some of these guys who really do stand the test of time? I mean, because the game is always changing. A guy like Negrano, for instance, who who seems to win wherever he goes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I have a lot of respect for people who have been around like that. Um, like, he was winning 10 years ago, and now he's playing in all the high rollers. He's still winning. Um, he can hang against the young, the young kids, which uh, is, is very impressive. Now, did you watch the November 9? If so, what are your thoughts on how things played out? Yeah, I, I watched most of it. Um, I thought everybody, with a few exceptions, played pretty well. And uh, especially the final three, I thought that was a great match. Um, Martin Jacobson... I've known for a long time, class acts, he's a great player, and uh, I thought he played the best and really deserved to win. Yeah, he really did play well. Did you, you think Jord Van Hoof kind of collapsed? or? No, I mean, I, I, I thought he played well. It's just kind of like the momentum and um, the way things were going. It, it just looked like Martin was going to win, and there wasn't much they could do about it. Um, Van, I thought Van Hoof played really well the first day, and maybe a little... A little, uh, a little worse in the second day, but he was still playing well. And then, of course, the whole poker world is talking about the unbelievable odds. I think at one in forty-two billion that Newhouse would finish ninth again. I mean, you got to feel for the guy, even though he's got this legacy in poker now. But still, it's a disappointing moment for him. Yeah, yeah, that's. Uh, I, I can't believe that happened. And um, I mean, I, I think, I think maybe, um, I think he said he didn't play any poker in between. He yeah. Didn't months off. I, I don't know if I would have gone with that strategy. I think uh, I would have done preparation more like Martin. But um, still, I mean, it's an incredible feat to do that. Yeah, I watched the uh, post-match uh, press conference, and he was quoted as saying that uh, it was the last thing he wanted to do with his free time was play poker. And in hindsight, man, oh man, will he question that forever. A lot of people really questioning him. I mean, this is a, for him, I guess, uh, a twice-in-a-lifetime shot, but for most, a once-in-a-lifetime. And the money is so staggering that, look what Jacobson did. He brought in some specialists, shorthanded, heads up, even a cash game specialist. He took, even though he was eighth in chips, he really took that opportunity, and then he capitalized on it. Yeah, I think he said he did 500 hours of preparation and simulations, uh, like 30 or 40 final table simulations, and uh, I, I would be more in that camp. I would be researching all my opponents while watching tape. I, I would be trying to do as much preparation as I can if I'm going to play for $10 million. So I'm, I'm with Martin. And i got to ask you as a poker fan, what do you think of Antonio Esfandiari as a color commentator? I mean, this year it was different because you could actually see the whole cards. But in the past, I mean, I just love his analysis and how he calls out hands, and usually he's bang on. Yeah, I, I think he's good. Um, I don't know if I like the dynamic, like the three of them, with Norman, Norman Chad, Juan, and Antonio. I think sometimes, I guess it's a little awkward. But um, his, his, his analysis is great. And, uh, I mean, people are hard on him, but you have to know he's not really catering to the top pros. He's, he's trying to explain things to random people who are watching on TV. Right. So uh, I, I think he does a good job. Yeah, and people forget that they watch it on Sunday nights and it's prepackaged and, you know, Norm and Lon know their lines. This was live all night and, you know, for many, many hours. So it's a different different element indeed. i got to ask you real quick. Uh, I know you're, you're, you live in Philadelphia, or at least you're from Philadelphia. I grew up a Flyers fan. In fact, I just watched a great documentary on the Broad Street Bullies. Are you a sports fan? I mean, Philadelphia's a great sports city, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm actually, I was born in Boston. I moved to Philadelphia recently, so I'm a Red Sox, uh, Patriots, uh, Celtics fan. Oh, I, okay, so Philadelphia, so the Flyers, maybe you don't like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not a huge Flyers fan. But, um, it, it is a great sport in town, and I mean, I still listen to sports radio, and the Eagles are kind of growing on me over the years. I'm, I'm starting to... Uh, they're starting to become like my second favorite team. Okay, and what about your, your lifestyle away from the poker table, Darren? Can you give us a glimpse into what things you're into, what you like to do? I uh, I work out. I like, to, I like to play racquetball quite a bit. And um, pretty close to my family. Uh, my uh, my wife's family, too. I'm married and uh, hanging out with my wife's family right now. My brother-in-law in Atlantic City. And um, not too much. Pretty, pretty normal guy. I guess I'm living at home and uh, we just got a puppy. Oh, right on. Uh, speaking of family, I guess these days it's easier to justify to family members that you play poker for a living, isn't it? Yeah, it's a lot easier than it used to be when I was 17 years old and my dad yelling at me, get off the computer. <laughs> it's a lot different.
Mike for help. It's kind of like my cousin who uh, played the drums and his parents hated it, but it turned out to be a real good thing because he travels the world now. Yeah, yeah, and uh, with, with my parents, I guess I kind of had to earn it. I had to put up results before they took me seriously, and uh, I don't really blame them. If, if I didn't know anything about poker and my son's gambling on the internet, I probably wouldn't be happy either. Yeah, because a lot of people see guys like you on TV winning and holding up the trophy and pocketing all that bank, but for every one of you, there's a, a thousand others that just don't make it and don't cut it. Yeah, yeah, and you don't always hear about the losses that, uh, that they have. Right. Well, listen, buddy, thanks for taking time out. Congratulations on your recent success. Real quick before I let you go, you're riding a wave of momentum now. Do you keep playing? I mean, when you're winning, that's when you keep playing, right? Yeah, I'm playing as much as I can right now. Uh, I'll play a $3,000 tournament on Sunday, and then I'm going to travel to Montreal for the next World Poker Tour event, um, Tuesday and Wednesday. So yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to keep it going. Montreal is a great city. You're playing on that reserve, I believe. Ganawake, enjoy it, man. Enjoy it. Thank you. Uh, it's, it's been great, Derek. I appreciate you having me on.